What is up, guys? It is AJ, and on today's video, we're going to be talking about Israel Adesanya versus Drakus Duplessis. This seems like it's going to be the next UFC middleweight championship fight. Do we know for sure? No, because unfortunately, UFC 293, they decide to book September 9th. That's like nine weeks from now, and Duplessis just fought on Saturday. So you start to wonder... Is that fight even possible? If there's any fighter that seems down for it, it's somebody like Duplessis. Looking at how his fight went on Saturday, I think there's a real chance that we could get it. Now, in this video, not only am I going to react to the news and kind of talk about what I think of the matchup, I'm going to give you guys my early prediction as well. So make sure you guys smash that like button. And if you're new to the channel, subscribe. Let's first talk about Drakus Duplessis, who had one of the best performances maybe in the fight game ever on Saturday. It was a massive upset. He beat Robert Whitaker, and he handled him. I mean, as soon as he kind of started figuring out Rob's style, he was hitting Rob a little bit on the feet, but at the end of the first round, when he threw him, I'm like, no way. Duplessis just threw Rob Whitaker, who's a really good wrestler, and he's beating the hell out of him from top. This is a Rob Whitaker that's gone rounds, 10 rounds with... Yoel Romero, when Romero was in his prime and peak dangerous, and Duplessis beating him up on the ground. And then when they get back up to the feet, uh, you know, obviously in the second round, Duplessis drops Whitaker, follows up with strikes, and breaks him. He looked like a man possessed out there. I know Duplessis recently got his nose redone because he had, you know, I believe like a deviated septum. He couldn't get breaths out of his nose. And now he goes out and destroys Robert Whitaker with relative ease. Like it was a fight that he really didn't take a lot of damage. He got hit a few times on the feet for sure, but it never looked like he was in any type of damage. I wasn't really thinking, oh, Rob Whitaker, he's having his moment. It was like, damn, Rob looks kind of outmatched here and then he got you know knocked out in the second round something that Israel Adesanya in the first fight with Rob Whitaker was able to do but then in the rematch they went the full five and many people even myself have felt that Rob Whitaker was 100% in that fight and you could make an argument that it could have went Rob's way now I think Adesanya is probably the rightful winner but it was really close and Duplessis bullied him you look at Duplessis previous couple he fought Derek Brunson, didn't look nearly as good against Derek Brunson. He fought Darren Till before that, didn't look nearly as good against Darren Till, but ultimately beat the brakes out of both of those guys towards the end. And now we have Israel Adesanya on the other side, who's coming off of back-to-back -back fights with Alex Pereira, his rival in kickboxing, losing one of them, knocked out, TKO'd, but still finished. And note that Israel Adesanya is fighting a guy like Pereira, who is extremely one-dimensional when compared to someone of Drakus Duplessis' caliber, who's 20-2 and two as a pro. You look before that, Israel Adesanya was pretty much dominating the middleweight division, right? Beating the likes of Jared Cannonier, obviously the Robert Whitaker fight a year and a half ago, and Marvin Vittori before that. He styled on those guys, and he moved well on those guys, and he, you know, evaded their shots, and he beat them. But if you think about all of those matchups, nobody there was like the young, hungry, up-and-coming contender who was unbeaten in the UFC. No one really challenged Adesanya. Obviously, Alex Pereira, I guess, was the young, hungry contender that beat him coming in, and then he, he obviously won the rematch. But different matchup because you think about their history in kickboxing. Pereira was, you know, an accomplished kickboxer that already had fights with Israel Adesanya. Drakus Duplessis is the new blood. He's the guy, 20-2, and two, South African, and he's only 29. That's something else that just keeps ringing in my mind. Duplessis is a 29-year-old fighter, so every time we see him, he's getting better, and now he gets his nose fixed, and it seems like he was not breathing nearly any bit heavy against Robert Whitaker. In other fights, you know, we'd be talking about Duplessis looking gassed out. He's breathing through his mouth because obviously he can't get breath through his nose. So the nose is fixed. Now they're saying mythical fighter Duplessis with the fixed nose. And I got to agree because the way he looked against Robert Whitaker, that's a terrifying contender. Israel Adesanya is also 34 years of age. Now, when you look at the matchup between these two, Israel Adesanya, six foot four, 
Duplessis, six foot one. So there's a height advantage. Four inch reach advantage. 80 inch reach for Adesanya. 76 inch reach for Duplessis. So you wonder, can Duplessis close the gap? Adesanya's got great striking from range. Excellent movement. But Duplessis is one of those guys that does close distance extremely well. And then when I look at Duplessis' well-roundedness, I would say that he is the biggest test of Israel Adesanya's MMA career. Even if I put, I know Jan Blachowicz is that guy, but Jan had faced plenty losses early in his UFC career. We'd seen him beaten, and then he made a resurgence. And obviously when Adesanya went up to challenge him at 205, he was able to you know, beat Izzy. Duplessis is the new blood the contender at middleweight that is coming to take over that seems to have this unbreakable will and unreal belief in himself. I mean, even in his post-fight interview, he seemed extremely confident. When him and Adesanya came face-to-face, Israel Adesanya, obviously some alcohol was in his system. As I also saw a clip of him kissing Kelvin Gastelum on the cheek and telling him, you know, I love you, brother, and stuff. So, you know, when you have a little alcohol in your system, everything's come out. You're a little bit nicer. You're a little bit sweeter. You're a little bit too sweet, maybe. But then he got inside of the cage and faced off with Duplessis. And Duplessis was stone-cold killer staring him down. Whereas Israel Adesanya is dropping the end bomb He kind of seems emotional. Even his voice is starting to crack. You can see he's irritated. He's upset. Granted. Yes, he was, you know, a little bit intoxicated. Duplessis coming off the biggest win of his career. But Duplessis won that face-off. Body language favored Duplessis by a long shot. Like, Israel Adesanya is bringing a lot of emotion into this fight. Obviously, because Drake is Duplessis, said, I'm the real Afri- I'm going to be the real African champ. Claiming that he breathes the African air. He lives on the African soil. He's the real African champ. Which makes Israel Adesanya fucking angry and it digs deep at Israel Adesanya 34 year old Israel Adesanya a recent loss to Alex Pereira where he has an advantage is definitely the distance striking but Duplessis closes the gap well I'd say Duplessis is the heavier handed puncher of the two even though Israel Adesanya is a tremendous counter striker and he does have knockouts he does have some power when he finds it a lot of times he's able to beat these guys winning decisions Duplessis I don't think allows that he's gonna bring the constant pressure my thoughts are this. I can see Duplessis backing Adesanya up towards the cage, ripping punches, causing Izzy to bring up a high guard, right? When Duplessis shoots on him, I believe that Duplessis might be pound for pound strongest middleweight we've seen in a very long time. I can see Drikis Duplessis picking Israel Adesanya up and putting him on his back. And I think Drikis Duplessis from the top position, Adesanya is going to be unable to move him. I could see Israel Adesanya on his back, taking ground and pound, getting beaten up on. So now I'm going to give you guys my early prediction. And many will say, that's the recency bias. You just saw him beat Rob Whitaker so dominantly, but Rob didn't want it. Rob wasn't there to win. Rob was just there for a paycheck. Rob looked old. Rob looked washed. I think Drikas Duplessis is going to dethrone Israel Adesanya after Saturday. It's not only what he did inside of the cage, it's also the feel that I got when they faced off. Duplessis has the advantage in the physicality. He's the stronger guy of the two. Yeah, he doesn't have the reach and the height, but he's the stronger guy of the two. If there's anybody that's going to close the gap on Izzy and make it tough, it's Duplessis. Adesanya is coming into this fight with back-to-back fights against Alex Pereira when he lost significant moments. I mean, even in the Pereira rematch, he was losing a lot of that fight with the Pereira pressure. And now I have Drakus Duplessis, who is a competent kickboxer. Note that he fought professionally in kickboxing. I believe he's a champion in South Africa with kickboxing. And then also bring into it... He's a strong motherfucker who has very good top control and showed vicious ground and pound against Robert Whitaker. I think Duplessis is going to put Israel Adesanya on his back and beat him up. Now, it's not going to happen in the first round. I think first two rounds are very interesting. I think Adesanya will be moving a lot early. Duplessis is going to be in the fight, but Adesanya is still going to be styling on him, maybe in the first round or two, but Duplessis is going to keep coming. And he's eventually going to find him backed up. And when he has his Adesanya towards the cage, I think his strength is going to show. There's going to be somebody that can finally take him down. We thought Vittori was going to be able to maybe control Adesanya a little bit. I feel like people thought Vittori was what Drakus Duplessis is. I think Duplessis is going to get Izzy to the floor, and he's going to shock a lot of people. He's also going to shock people on the feet, and then he's going to TKO him in the third round. 
I think ground and pound is possible. He's saying he's going to knock him out on the feet, which maybe that's possible too because he's shown he's got a huge right hand. I'm going to go Dracus Duplessis for the upset. He's going to shake the fucking world. He's going to shock everybody. He's going to fuck up the whole MMA scene. I mean, honestly, Duplessis as champion... It kind of, at this point, is starting to make sense to me. He's 20 and 2 as a pro, 29 years old. Israel Adesanya at 34. He had a bad fight against Alex Pereira where he lost. Even in the rematch, he found the perfect counter strike, but he was losing a lot of that fight. Also, Duplessis coming out in Southpaw shows me that he's got a great MMA mind. His team around him is incredible. I'm going to pick Drake as Duplessis for the upset. Now, my fantasy betting odds that I'm going to list off, I expect Duplessis as a fairly large underdog. I think Adesanya opens as a 3-1 to one favorite. I do think there's going to be a lot of people on that Duplessis dog side, especially him coming in after beating Robert Whitaker. People are maybe are going to be feeling like me. So definitely let me know in the comments. Am I ludicrous for this? Am I fucking crazy? Do you think that Drake is Duplessis has no chance? Or are you seeing that Duplessis might be the guy to dethrone Israel Adesanya? He's five years younger. He's making the constant improvements. Is he showing a couple chinks in his armor with the Alex Pereira rivalry? I know it's going to be short notice, right? Because nine weeks from now, we got that UFC 293. But I do believe Duplessis is going to show up for it. And he's going to bring everything to Adesanya. He's going to come ready and in great shape. He seems like he's in better shape than pretty much any other middleweight. Like, this is the fight now. Kelvin Gastelum gave Adesanya hell early. A hungry Kelvin Gastelum. Drickus Duplessis is hungrier than anybody in the middleweight division right now. And I believe he is certain that he can beat Israel Adesanya in his mind. And that's what it takes. I think everybody else that fights his Rod Asanya, besides an Alex Pereira, seem to have substantial doubt. They all went into that fight, even though they say they're confident, they all have a, an inch of doubt. Man, Adesanya is that guy. He's so long. He's so hard to hit. Where can I beat him? Duplessis believes he can beat him everywhere. So I think Drickus Duplessis is going to pull off the big upset, the new champion. And it's going to be in Australia, so there's probably going to be a fucking riot with Duplessis winning. People are going to be booing the hell out of him. This is one of the most bitter rivalries I think we'll see in MMA. This is not a one fight. Adesanya could potentially find some things out, maybe win a rematch. But in this first fight, I think that Duplessis is going to pull it off. I think Izzy's taking another L. I think Drickus Duplessis in Australia is going to dethrone Adesanya. And then what happens? They really need to work towards booking that UFC Africa fight. And then we run the rematch in Africa. This is the real African championship battle. I feel like they should do something with the belt. Like, I don't know, something cool with the belt. They did it uh, for the Mexican champs. They wanted to do some cool designs. And then both of the Mexicans lose their championship fights last Saturday. Maybe we do something interesting. We throw an African title on the line. I don't think they'll do it maybe in Australia, but if they run a rematch in Africa, I think there's so many possibilities. If I was the UFC, though, I would have pushed back UFC 293, knowing that Volkanovski is fighting on the same night that the number one contender fight in the middleweight division is. So why are we you know, putting the card nine weeks out? It puts the UFC in a weird spot. I mean, if Duplessis took any type of injuries, then we couldn't make that fight. And then maybe Sean Strickland's the next matchup. I'm going to say this. Tapology has Adesanya and Duplessis up as an unconfirmed rumor about. Maybe they know something that I don't, that it's official. But if it doesn't happen, maybe somehow Strickland then would jump in and take that fight. And then Duplessis and Adesanya fight later in the year. But I just don't see it. I don't see Strickland as the next guy up. I think Duplessis is going to take the fight in Australia in nine weeks. And I think he's going to bring it to Adesanya. He didn't talk about taking that fight in nine weeks. He said Dana White knows because Dana White was asked that question. That the fighters want to enjoy themselves after a massive fight. Let him relax a little bit. Get to his family recover, and then pick it up again. And I think Duplessis is going to do it, guys. I'm going Duplessis. I'm going to say he shocks the world. 293 needs it. It's going to save 293. If not for Adesanya and Duplessis on 293, I have no idea what they're going to do with that card. I mean, is Volkanovski going to make a crazy quick turnaround and then defend against Ilya Taporia after just fighting? I mean, he didn't take significant damage against Yair Rodriguez, but he still took some shots. He was still bleeding. Duplessis wasn't bleeding. He doesn't have any any cuts on him. Adesanya had a nice little break since uh, he fought, I believe, in April against Alex Pereira and beat him in the rematch. And you look at that 293 card. Right now, we got Kai Kara France and El Cop, which is an awesome flyweight fight. I love it. Tai Tuivasa Volkov is a really fun heavyweight fight. And we got Viviani Arujao and Casey O'Neill. That's all we got right now for 293. There needs to be more steam. There needs a main event. 
And if it's not Adesanya versus Duplessis, I don't know what it is. And Adesanya versus Strickland could be a cool fight, but nobody's asking for that one because Adesanya just got into the cage with Duplessis and they sold that fight. And it's a bitter rivalry and it's the one that I think all fans want to see. To me, this is maybe one of the most anticipated middleweight fights ever. This fight kind of brings it back to like Chael Sonnen, Anderson Silva type hype. I don't feel like we've had a middleweight like Duplessis that had all this steam coming in to fight for the belt. This is it. This is the matchup. It's Adesanya Duplessis. I think it happens at 293. If I was the UFC, I mean, is there a way we can finagle it and push that card back another week or two? I'm pretty sure they already got the venue over in Sydney, Australia, so that might not be possible, but that would be my preference. I would much prefer them give Duplessis an extra two or three weeks, but they want to do it September 9th, and that's not long, right? Not even nine weeks. What is it? Eight weeks from now? It's July 10th at the time of this recording. And that card's September 9th. We got less than two months to it. I'm going to say Duplessis shows up. They save the card. They have an epic fight. And Duplessis dethrones out of Sanya. And then they run it back. And we make that UFC Africa in 2024. That's what I'm hoping for. That's what I'm praying for. I think all fans should be praying for that. So uh, the MMA gods, hopefully they're listening. Dricus Duplessis to pull it off, guys. Maybe I'm crazy. Let me know in the comments. I'm curious what you guys are thinking. I wanted to throw up a little bit of uh, an early prediction, reaction, excitement video. You guys can sense that I'm excited. I haven't been excited for an Adesanya fight like that. Even the Pereira matchups didn't give me the same excitement that Duplessis does. I thought that Adesanya was much more well-rounded than Alex Pereira, and he definitely is. Duplessis, I can't say the same thing. And then note that Duplessis is younger at 29 improving constantly, seems to have something special about him. His confidence is unmatched. I'm going to Plessy for the upset. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this reaction, excitement, hype, early prediction video. Definitely smash the likes. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'm going to try to drop more of these. I've been saying I'm not going to try. I'm going to drop more of these. I'm going to be dropping news reactions when fights officially drop. Uh, I'm trying to add that to the channel. So make sure your post notifications are turned on and put them on all and not personalized if you're interested in these news reaction videos too alongside of the prediction and live stream content that you already know I'm bringing. Much love to the people watching. I appreciate each and every one of you. It was a blast in that fight companion holy shit i can't imagine the 293 fight companion with Duplessis adesanya actually happening much love my people i'll see you all in the next one peace everybody